Now I'll introduce today's speaker. I'm very pleased to welcome Julie Robinson. Julie joined us from SGI DNA in California, and she has a wealth of experience in synthetic biology and cloning technologies. And we're really excited to have Julie here to present today's topic, Accelerate Your Research with Synthetic DNA and Hands-Free Cloning. Take it away, Julie. Hello, thanks Beth, and thank you all for attending this webinar today. I'm Julie Robinson, the Senior Product Manager at Synthetic Genomics. The key learning objectives for today are to learn about the potential of synthetic genomics, explore new cloning and genomic workflows to accelerate your research, and to review some new genomic applications for automation. First, let's talk about the potential of synthetic biology. Generally, synthetic biology refers to the redesign, repurposing, and changing the naturally occurring biological systems and components for design and creation of new biological components that do not already exist in nature. This technology is useful in all industries, including agriculture. Think about developing drought-resistant crops or food and nutrition, creating new additives like omega-3s. Energy. Of course, we're all talking about biofuels and focusing on new fuel options. Chemicals. New chemicals for personal care or packaging or environmental applications for things like new ways for water treatment. And of course, we hear a lot about the medicinal applications, uh, developing personalized medicine and therapeutics. These are all powerful ways to utilize the potential of synthetic biology. So first, let me introduce to you SGI DNA. SGI DNA is a synthetic genomics company, um, fully incorporated by synthetic genomics. It was founded in 2013 in La Jolla, California. It focuses on development and commercialization of new and proprietary technologies that enable synthetic biology. And we offer synthetic services, instruments, bioinformatics, and reagents. The company is building on scientific advancements and breakthroughs from leading synth synthetic genomic scientists. So the founder of Synthetic Genomics and SGI DNA are Craig Venter. You might know him as the first humo human whose genome was sequenced. Hamilton Smith, who actually won the 1978 Nobel Peace Prize in medicine. He discovered type 2 restriction enzymes and Dan Gibson, the founder of Gibson Assembly Technology, who continues to work in a research capacity at Synthetic Genomics. So we'll review some of the collaborative efforts that Synthetic Genomics participates in. A recent press release talked about our advancement working with ExxonMobil around developing algae to develop to create um, a fuel alternative. We also have a, um, a focus on creating systems and technologies uh, to develop on-demand production of vaccines. Um, this is exciting and very important work. And another exciting project that Synthetic Genomics is engaged in is working with United Therapeutics to humanize the pig lung. Uh, there are a number of folks on the transplant, transplant waiting list, and the, the idea behind humanizing the pig lung is to essentially make the pig um, a viable candidate for organs for human transplantation. And by humanizing the pig lung, uh, it really um, limits the rejection from humans. So it's very important work. So taking a look at some of the products SGI DNA offers, um, we offer reagents, the Gibson Assembly uh, cloning technologies uh, are a key um, foothold in our reagent supply, or a reagent offering. Um, the instruments, which we'll talk a little bit more about today, the BioXP3200, um, this is our benchtop genomic workstation where a focus of this um, discussion will be. SGI DNA also office, offers services. These are um, gene synthesis service, plasma prep services, and such. 
um, anything around um, genomic applications that you need, we do have custom synthesis service, custom services to offer, as well as bioinformatics. This is key in um, supporting synthetic biology. First, you have to understand the gene and um, the areas that that gene is functional and the things you might want to change. So we have a whole series of bioinformatics tools and analytics to help you design your experiments. Let's talk first about some common genomic applications. Applications of DNA cloning. Now, I'm sure a number of you are familiar with cloning already. It's been used for decades. <clears throat> it's important in the study of genomes and gene expression. It's been utilized in developing gene therapies in the medicinal area. It's you know, commonly used in creating transge transgenic organisms. It's used in biopharmaceutical research, recombinant protein production, and cell engineering. So these are all ways that cloning plays a part in developing um, new, new uh, breakthroughs. And so what synthetic biology does is it is just an extension of DNA cloning that provides a more precise, more targeted way to get to your discovery sooner. So within synthetic biology, um, a common way that people utilize it is in genome and genome, gene and genome modification. So essentially what you're doing is you're mo very specifically modifying your gene of interest in a region where you think it will have the greatest impact and altering the function of that gene. And so in this uh, slide, we show a series of gene fragments one of which has been altered using synthetic biology. And then we use the Gibson assembly method to stitch them together to create an edited genome. And then that genome, we'll study that to see what the impact of those very specific changes are. Another way is constructing variant libraries. Libraries have also been around for a long time. And they're key when you don't precisely know exactly where the change is that's going to give you the, the, um, the function that you most want. So traditionally, you have your, your prep DNA, and then you go through a series of mutagenesis steps. And this can be very tedious. Um, and then you clone, transform, and then you screen your resulting variants. This can often take weeks or months to get a library that is representative of what you want to study. With synthetic biology on the bottom here, you actually just dial in precisely which gene changes, which um, sites you want to change in that genome, build exactly what you want to represent, clone that, and transform. And you can do this in a much quicker way, creating variants in a library that will get you to where you need to be much faster. So it's just a very specific and targeted way to create the gene variants that you want to study. So right here, we're going to take an audience poll. Uh, get your feedback. We do really would like to know what you, what you think of what you're doing in the lab. So let's take this poll, and then we'll be back in a minute. OK, thanks, Julie. And this will bring us to our first poll. Um, if you are uh, participating as a full screen, if you're watching in full screen, please hit exit so you can vote. And you can choose um, multiple answers. Um, the question is, how do you prepare or modify your genes for analysis? Um, PCR amplification, site-directed mutagenesis. Maybe you're getting DNA synthesized from a service provider. Uh, maybe you're constructing your own libraries from cDNA. Uh, or maybe you've got a completely different method that we have stood here. And if that's the case, we would love to type in your uh, method in the chat box. Oh, there we go. Someone is using error-prone PCR. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, looks like there's a lot of folks that are using PCR amplification. That's a fairly common method. And site-directed mutagenesis. Um, and then some folks get, that are getting their DNA synthesized from a service provider. I know those are, those are all pretty common methods, um, as is error-prone PCR. So. Uh, thank you very much for your participation. We'll stop the poll here.
Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about cloning as it pertains to the BioXP. So first we'll review the Gibson assembly method. Dr. Dan Gibson actually work, continues to work for synthetic, bio, synthetic genomics. Um, and he, in fact, developed this methodology in 2009 uh, to construct the first synthetic cell. So this is the largest construct um, that was built. In its time, it was 1.2 megabase pairs. And it was a mycoplasma genome. So this entire genome was built synthetically. Uh, which really showed the power of synthetic biology and the Gibson assembly method to be able to actually synthesize de novo the entire genome. Since then, Gibson assembly method has become a mainstay in many synthetic biology labs due to its ease of use, robustness, and flexibility. And just as a quick review, let's take a look at traditional restriction cloning which actually is, continues to be used quite commonly in the, in the field, versus the Gibson assembly method. So traditional cloning requires often a series of restriction enzyme digestions, um, bringing fragments together, and then repeating to add the next fragment and the next fragment until you actually have a, a clone that is functional for your studies. The problem with this is it can take many weeks and failed attempts. Um, just because restriction enzyme cloning simply is not terribly efficient and takes a lot of time and energy. When you compare that to the Gibson assembly method, this is a method where you specifically design the, the individual fragments and then you can clone them all together in a single reaction to build the construct of interest. And so the beauty of this is there's no restriction enzyme scars. It's a seamless cloning methodology, and it's very powerful. Basically, the, the trick is just in the design of your fragments to all come together. It's a very elegant design and offers a lot of benefits, especially in synthetic biology. Now let's talk a little bit more about the, the BioXP 3200 system. So to introduce the system, the BioXP is really the world's first DNA printer. This personal genomic workstation provides hands-free applications for building synthetic DNA and directly cloning these fragments in an overnight run. It also constructs DNA um, next-gen sequencing-ready libraries if you need to sequence your uh, genomic DNA or plasma DNA. And this all happens in a two by two cube size on your workbench. In addition to the current applications, we're continuing to build out the genomic workflow. Currently, this instrument builds 400 base pair to 1800 base pair fragments. It has a couple of different cloning applications. One, it builds and clones directly into a subcloning vector, which we call the PUCGA which is a PUC-19 based subcloning vector, or you can build constructs and clone it directly into your own vector. Um, and it also, we recently introduced the NGS Library Construction Kit. So this, these libraries are built for Illumina next-gen sequencing platforms. So the BioXP really is a true genomic workstation that's geared towards accelerating genomic discovery and taking some of the tedious applications off of your bench and into an automated platform. So some of the benefits include for the synthetic applications, um, it runs up to 32 reactions overnight. It's hand-free assembly and cloning of 400 to 1.8 kb fragments. It provides workflow control in obtaining your DNA fragments and clones. It's compatible, it's compatible with many cloning techniques. The DNA built on deck can actually be used in any downstream application. It streamlines your geno genomic processing. It's faster turnaround time than many conventional methods, and it's simple to use. You basically submit your order, receive your reagents, load the deck, 
in less than five or ten minutes, you can actually have the instrument running, and then you just go home, enjoy your evening, and come back the next morning for your final products. So the benefits are really to uh, help the scientists by automating a lot of the tedious work to accelerate discovery, all in your all in your laboratory. So let's take a quick look at some of the product types. The BioXT, BioXP tile, we refer to it as, is simply a double-stranded DNA fragment. It's built precisely to the sequence that you submit. It has no modifications. It's basically a pool of DNA, much like a PCR reaction is. Uh, the turnaround time is three to five days, and it's roughly 11 to 14 cents a base pair, based on your volume needs. And as I said before, these tiles can be used in any cloning method or any downstream application that you need that DNA for. You design it, and it's ready for you. So the cloning, there's two different clonings, as I mentioned. And the primary difference between these are which vector it's going into. But essentially, much like the tile, you submit the sequence of the inserts that you want to uh, provide. Those sequences are assembled and then cloned directly into the vector that you put on the deck. Uh, at the end, the next morning, you've got a pool of clones. And that is ready for transformation. Um, and then you simply screen those, verify, sequence verify to find your error-free clone, and then it's ready to use. Basically, you do your plasmid prep, grow it up, and bring it into your downstream applications. And then the NGS library prep, it's available in eight or 16 reaction formats. It preps libraries for genomic or plasmid DNA. Um, it's got a five-hour run time, so you can easily do this in a day. It's actually about 30 minutes of hands-on time. It's built for Illumina compatibility for next-gen sequencing. And it's $40 to $50 a reaction, um, but it also includes in the kit the barcodes and the purification beads, which are often, need, um, often in other kits, you have to buy those separately. So this is an all-inclusive kit. And as I said before, it's Illumina sequencing. So uh, that's a very common and effective way to sequence your, your um, samples. So again, by utilizing these, you're um, streamlining your tedious bench work. And we're developing more and more applications to provide flexibility on both the instrument as well as create new ways to, to automate using the BioXP. So you might be wondering, well, how do, how, do, how do I work with this? How do I engage with BioXP? So this is an overview of the workflow. So basically, you log on to the portal, and you submit the sequences you'd like to build. SGI DNA will review the sequence, design the oligos, and create your custom kit. Your custom kit is shipped to you in three to five days. And then you can simply load the instrument and start the job in about five to 10 minutes. Uh, and the run takes place overnight. In the morning, you come in, and your DNA flag fragments or cloning reaction is ready for your downstream workflow. So it takes about five to six days to actually, from the time you place the order to the time that you collect your DNA or your DNA clones. And here's a look at the modular BioXP deck. As I said, this is a two by two square foot platform. Um, and there are some key components. The first component in the center back is uh, the thermocycler. You can see they're noted by the oligo vault. That's a component of your custom kit. But that's the thermocycler, and it's got a swinging heated lid um, in the center where the reagent plate and the recovery plate go, those are two chilled locations that are used to keep your reagents cool during some of the long cycling conditions. Uh, the eight well strip holder is actually available for adding additional reagents or reagents that are unique to the application that you're running. 
It's just another way and another um, place to put additional reagents. In the back next to the thermocycler is a 96 well DNA magnetic stand used for DNA purification. So DNA purification happens on deck with the BioXP. It builds the fragments and then purifies those fragments away from the reaction conditions. And then another key aspect of this is there's an onboard camera. That camera can actually sweep across the deck and read the reagents that you have on there to help you make sure you've loaded things properly and everything's um, appropriate for what you're trying to run. The key thing is this instrument is hooked up to the internet and all the protocols are actually housed in the cloud. So there's a 2D barcode on the Oligo Vault that's customized just for your kit. So the instrument reads that barcode and pulls the appropriate protocol out of the cloud so it knows exactly what you're building and what process to run. Um, and there's also places for tips and the waste and the thermal couplers and such. But the key to note about this deck is it's actually quite versatile. So any enzymatic reaction can actually be run using this basic deck. And in fact, all of our current applications and applications that we're working on currently are suited for this deck. So you won't have to, you won't be asked to buy another instrument in, in a couple years because we have a new application and you need something totally different. This instrument was designed with flexibility and simplicity with a modular design that's appropriate for pretty much any enzymatic reaction. So rest assured that you will get a lot of use out of your BioXP. Another key aspect of the BioXP is a product map. So this is customized with your information. On the first page, it'll note all the information that you provided us, your name, the project name, the order date, the project type. Um, and you'll notice that there are red and green dots on this map and then a, a listing of your constructs. So this basically maps the construct to the location on the well and the final recovery plate. And the green indicates um, sequences that have a high likelihood of success for assembly. And then the red simply means these constructs are more challenging to assemble um, and they may or may not work. So the green is the sweet spot of the BioXP protocols available, and the greens are simply means it's outside of the sweet spot, and there's a higher risk that these um, DNA sequences won't build appropriately. So, but the good news is you get to try whatever you like, um, and we're happy to give you feedback feedback on whether or not we think these will build. Um, so. Um, but we do allow you to build whatever you'd like to try on this instrument. And then on the back side, you'll actually get a list of the components um, and the storage conditions. So like I said, these are custom kits, and so we include very precise information on each kit with your information. Um, and this is also housed in your space on the ordering portal. So you can always go back online and look at this archived information. So let's take a really quick look at the tiles. Um, whenever you submit sequences, as I mentioned the red and green, we actually do take a look at each of the sequences. One, we review it to make sure that there are no um, you know, biosecurity issues with it. Or if there are, if you're trying to build Ebola or something, that you have the, the approvals from the agencies to work with such an organism. But generally, the sizes, as I've mentioned, are 400 base pairs to 1,800 base pair. Uh, GC range for the smaller is uh, smaller size fragments are 20 to 70 percent average GC. And for the larger fragments, it's about 40 to 60 percent, 60 percent GC. Excuse me. Uh, we, we're currently um, except ATGC. We don't have degenerate bases just yet, but we're working on that. Um, sequence complexity, this is something uh, that we scan each sequence to look for tandem repeats, for hairpins, for strings of A's or T's, things that would just make it more difficult to build synthetically. 
Um, and that's these are the things that we look at to determine whether or not it's red or green. Within the app, within the protocol, there's actually an error correction step to minimize the occurrence of mutations. The yield is approximately 200 nanograms of purified linear double-stranded PCR product. And of course, the actual yield varies per construct. Some are easier to build, assemble than others. Um, and, you know, the, um, in the cloning reaction, what you're finished with is actually a cloning reaction. So um, that product coming off the cloning reaction is actually ready for downstream trans um, transformation and plating. And then the format uh, is basically the product for tiles is provided in 45 microliters TE or the cloning reaction, which I think is about 20 microliters. This is just a nice representation of the capabilities of what can be built on the BioXP. This represents fragments from 400 to 1800 base pairs in 40% through 60% GC, average GC. Um, so you can see that some built more robustly than others. Some actually have smaller subassemblies. And oftentimes, these are the dynamics of the sequence itself. So this gives a good representation of um, what the capabilities of the system are. Now let's take a closer look at the cloning product. We'll review the custom cloning first, because really, this is a very exciting product. Um, this is the first and only automated cloning system that allows you to build synthetic genes and then take those genes and clone them directly into the vector of your choice, all hands-free, overnight, uh, in your lab. So it completely em eliminates the need for subcloning. As I said, you can build up to 32 custom cl cloning reactions at once. And in fact, you can load up to four different vectors in a single run. So if a number of you in the lab are working maybe with different vectors, you can each participate in a single run on the BioXP for custom cloning. Uh, the cool thing is what's left on the deck is you actually get the, both the tile and the clone product. Um, it's single button processing. Again, it's an overnight run. You load it up before you go home at night, and then the next morning it's ready for you. And it supports the DNA, as we talked about, um, 400 to 1800 KB in the GC parameters criteria that we outlined earlier. And for custom cloning, since you're responsible for um, prepping your vector, we actually have protocols and methods on our website for you to download to help you both design uh, your experiment for Gibson assembly, as well as prep the vector and test the vector prior to loading it on the BioXP. And this is just a visual image of the BioXP method and cloning the BioXP tiles. So here you can see our PUC, 19, or PUC GA uh, vector. It's linearized. It's got homologous overlaps to the BioXP tile that's going to be produced synthetically on the BioXP. So you can see how the cloning regions are simply homologous overlap regions of the vector and the tile. So the instrument actually builds this tile. And then when the tile is complete, it actually moves it into a Gibson assembly reaction, where through the Gibson assembly method, you can actually build a fully assembled construct. The next morning when you come in, you take that construct and you transform it and plate it. Clone, Gibson assembly cloning is simple. It's fast. It's efficient. It's seamless, and the best part is it doesn't depend on any restriction enzyme digestions or scars or complications. So because of this BioXP method, or this BioXP and Gibson assembly method together, it really helps to highlight the power of synthetic biology. And again, as I mentioned, it's the only instrument that both builds DNA and clones it directly into your vector of choice. That's pretty cool, especially when you're used to spending weeks trying to get this to work. So an overview of what you would do 
in the workflow is first you design your, your experiment using Gibson assembly. Uh, you'd prepare your vector, linearize it, test it, QC it, and then you'd order the BioXP custom cloning product on the portal. And you provide all your sequences, and then we build you a custom kit. You simply load the BioXP with the reagents we send you and add your vector in the provided eight well strip and then you run the experiment or you run the reaction overnight in the morning. You collect the clone uh, reaction product. You transform, you plate, you pick colonies, and then you analyze and sequence those colonies. So in a single reaction, you can, a single run, you can have up to 32 reactions per run. We provide the custom kit in three to five days. And if you work through the timeline, you can actually get six to, you can, in six to eight days, you can find your error-free clones, which when compared to traditional methods or even some methods available through custom synthesis services, that's lightning fast. So this can really help aid your acceleration to discovery. This simply demonstrates some of the high cloning efficiency that's created on the BioXP um, using um, the cloning function. So if you think back to that GC gel that we had the, from 400 to 1800 and the multiple GCs, we took those fragments and actually cloned them into our Puck GA vector. And generally, this follows what you would expect. The small fragments tend to clone a little bit higher efficiently, higher efficiency than the larger clones. But regardless, in all aspects, you get a very reasonable cloning efficiency. And that's very helpful for, especially in an automated format, you can rely on Gibson assembly to um, clone your fragments quite readily. And remember, this is all happening in an overnight run while you're enjoying your family or sleeping. In this slide, we actually demonstrate the six to eight days. So you can see on the top, there's BioXP cloning, where you order your, your kit, you run the BioXP, you transform, sequence, confirm, and get an error-free clone. And that actually can happen in six to eight days. Um, in if you order your DNA fragment in the synthetic um, custom synthesis space, oftentimes those products are delivered in a subcloning vector. The fragment is sequence verified, but then once you wait the you know 15 days or so uh, to get that product, once you receive it, you have to take that fragment out, retransform into the vector you want, and then oftentimes customers resequence it just to confirm. Uh, and in that scenario, it can take 15 to 20 days. And then, of course, traditional cloning tends to be um, the longest lead time to get your um, clone of interest. So depending on what you need to do and how you need to get your original materials, it can actually take 20 to 25 days, almost a month, to get your error-free clone if you use a traditional method. So the BioXP really can reduce your uh, timeline in receiving the clones you need to move your reaction forward. Another key in success, especially around cloning, is choosing your competent cell. And we found um, that the Lucigen cells actually work very well with Gibson Assembly. Um, when we launched Gibson Assembly, customers were using you know, their own very favorite competent cell in the market, but they weren't always having great success with Gibson Assembly. And so we started looking into high efficiency, which is key if you want to optimize your, your cloning reaction. Um, and uh, we started looking at the most robust cell lines we can find. So we found two strains, actually, from Lucigen that work very well with Gibson assembly. And it's just that these cells are quite robust and um, provide lots of colonies to pick from. So the two are... Transformax Epi300 electrocomp cells, and Eclonai 10G K2 
chemically comp cells. Uh, both of these we've had very good success with. So it's really important that to avoid any failures of not getting any colonies or just generally troubleshooting, we highly recommend using one of these two strains for your research. We found them to be quite robust and helpful in success in uh, Gibson assembly. So choosing your strain, a couple key things to keep in mind is the overall transformation efficiency um, and some of the characteristics of that strain. The Rec A- and the N-A- actually are very good genotypes for plasmid preparation, um, which is what most people are doing when they're cloning uh, DNA. Uh, they provide blue-white colony screening capabilities um, and some other benefits. The other nice thing about Lucigen is you can actually have these custom or these competent cells provided in any number of formats that you might need for your um, your laboratory. So if you need something that's outside of the standard, feel free to give them a call. They will develop whatever format that you need for success. If you're not familiar with the different types of competent cells, let's review real quick the differences. So chemically competent cells, like the E-clonai 10G, they're e generally easy to work with. They're a lower cost per reaction. They don't require any specialized equipment. Basically, an ice bucket is what you need. Um, you can get away with larger DNA volumes to be transformed. Uh, generally, they have lower transformation efficiencies than electrocomp. Um, and then they are amenable to high throughput cloning as well. For Transformax, electrocomp, uh, it's a shorter protocol. It's also amenable to automation if you have the right equipment. Um, the key thing, the key difference is it requires an electroporator and the disposable cuvettes. So this is a consideration. If you don't have an electroporator, you might want to start with trying out a chemically comp cell. Um, it generally requires lower DNA volumes. Uh, they generally have higher transformation efficiencies. And these cells in particular can accept very large plasmids. So if that's what you need, these might be the cells for you. The great thing is Lucigen lets you try whatever you need. They have a number of competent cells available on their website that you simply submit a request for sample cells and they'll send you a free sample. So you can try whatever cell you think is, is best suited for you before you commit to that um, cell as a purchase. So now we're going to take a look at comparing uh, using these two types of cells in Gibson assembly. So here you can see uh, basically plates with colonies. So the top row are the Epi 300 electrocomp cells, and below are the Eclonai 10G chemically comp cells. And just visually looking at this, you can see that there are in fact more colonies on the chemically comp cells for us than on the electrocomp cells. So you never know what's really going to be your best option until you try them. And looking at the numbers, you can actually see that the 10 Gs provided a significantly higher number of colonies. So everywhere from twofold to over sixfold difference between the two. And honestly, if um, the chemically comp cells work for you, that might be the first thing to try. Um, it's easy. It's fa it's you know reasonably fast. It gets uh, great results, especially using Gibson assembly. And this applies to whether you're doing Gibson assembly on the bench or whether you're transforming the Gibson assembly product um, off of the BioXP. We highly recommend these cells so that you get plenty of colonies to select from in finding your error-free clone. So we actually saw very high transformation efficiencies using Gibson assembly reactions with both of these cell types. And it's great to be able to recommend both an electrocomp and a chemically comp for your needs. So uh, you can choose exactly what you need. And again, free Lucigen chemically comp cells samples. If you don't know which one you need, um, just go ahead and check out their website and you can get a free sample. So that's the best way um, to give it a whirl um, and figure out 
which option might be best for you. And then, of course, on the SGI DNA website, we have a series of application notes that talk about comparison, comparison of comp cells, um, some of the tips and tricks to keep in mind around Gibson assembly and cloning on the BioXP. So feel free to reference the website and find application notes that might be of interest to you. So now we'll take another audience poll. OK, and thank you, Julie. Our second poll of the webinar today. Uh, this is a little bit different than the first one. Well, we'd like to know about how your lab actually performs cloning reactions. So there's multiple different ways, as all of you know, that you could do cloning, um, one of which is uh, good old-fashioned restriction enzyme cloning. Looks like a lot of folks are using that. Um, again, feel free if you're using multiple cloning methods. Please uh, go ahead and, and check multiple choices. Uh, we're interested in, in all of the you've got going on. Uh, looks like a couple people or one person may be doing gateway and TA cloning of PCR products is fairly common. Um, maybe some of you are doing Golden Gate cloning or ligation independent cloning uh, or LIC. Uh, a couple people doing Gibson assembly already. That's great. Uh, hopefully after this webinar you'll have more folks doing Gibson assembly. And then if you are using another method, let us know in the chat box. And it looks like most people have had a chance to vote at this point. Restriction enzymes appears to be the clear winner. OK, thank you. We will move on with the webinar. OK, so let's talk about the BioXP NGS Library Construction Kit. So basically, this Library Construction Kit is, is a simplified kit for you to construct libraries that are Illumina compatible for next-gen sequencing chemistries. Um, it's optimized for a common workflow. <clears throat> it's not a high-throughput solution, um, but we found that there's a lot of people that don't need the 96-well NGS samples all at once. So in an effort to really develop out the genomic applications of the BioXP, we thought this would be a nice add-on or a nice application to provide customers of the BioXP um, to supplement their synthetic biology needs. So as I mentioned earlier, this next-gen chemistry is for genomic and plasma DNA. The optimized protocol is for 10 to 50 nanograms of input DNA. It's a single button processing. Basically, you load your samples and the instrument runs for five hours. It's important to note that this is an all-inclusive kit. The barcodes and purification beads are included in the system, and it's available in the 8 and 16 reaction size. And it works, again, as I said, for genomic DNA samples with both low and high GC percentages, as well as plasma DNA. And this simply allows you an automated platform when you're building your next-gen sequencing libraries. So let's take a quick look at the workflow. Basically, you take your DNA of interest, and we recommend a mechanical shearing. And what this does is this breaks your DNA into fragments of about 350 base pairs. You load those onto a plate. You install it with all of the other reagents on the BioXP. And then it goes through the process of essentially assembling your library. There's end repair and adenylation. There's adapter ligation, it's cleaned up with magnetic beads, and then the library is amplified, and then it's cleaned up again with magnetic purification. At the end of the run, you simply take your samples, normalize, pool, and they're ready for sequencing. So it's a very clean way to prep your libraries for next-gen sequencing. And again, it's using this modular deck. And loading the reagents are very simple for the NGS library reagents. We provide you all the consumables besides the tips, the, the plates, the strips, the reagents. So basically, you prep your, your genomic DNA and add them to the sample plate. And then you add your next-gen sequencing reagents. You load the barcode and the out plate, output plate, and the magnetic strips. 
you provide ethanol for purification, and then you, you add the tips, the necessary, and you close the lid and press start. And again, it's about a five hour run, um, easily done in a single day for you to prep your NGS library. And this is just a quick review of um, some data. So here it indicates high quality libraries resulted in um, this data output. The replicate libraries were constructed from Bacillus or microbe B genomic DNA using the BioXP construction kit. The average size distribution of the library sequenced and percent dimer represented in the final library. And the number of reads all demonstrate that this is a valuable, reliable way to build your um, libraries for next gen sequencing. <clears throat> so the BioXP is not only a DNA printer, it's becoming a complete genomic workstation. So in summary, the BioXP prints DNA that you need and serves as a personal genomic workstation. You can build your DNA on the deck. You can clone it, these fragments, into your vector of choice in an overnight run. And you can also generate next-gen sequencing libraries, all in a two-by-two two space footprint on your benchtop. We're continuing to evolve new applications along the genomic workflow. So currently, as we've talked about it, the BioXP tiles are available. A couple different methods for cloning, including custom cloning, where you provide your vector of choice, and the NGS Library Construction Kit. Some upcoming applications that we're working on are we continue to build DNA fragments at a higher fidelity. Remember I talked about the error correction? Uh, we're improving that, improving the conditions and the, the, um, the reagents to provide an even higher fidelity product. Uh, we're also building, working towards building larger DNA fragments. Uh, the next one will launch is up to 3 KB. Another application that's getting a lot of excitement in the field is building degenerate libraries. Um, things like NNN and NNK libraries, uh, these can be done on the BioXP. So we're working to develop those protocols so that you have an easy and economical way to build the libraries of interest. And then we're constantly looking and building uh, new application notes um, to support your activities um, using either the, the protocols we currently have or thinking about new ways to use the BioXP. So in sum, the BioXP 3200 system is a true genomic workstation all around accelerating genomic discovery. Imagine the possibilities. We talked about what's currently offered in some of upcoming um, applications. And we really do rely on our customers to learn about what are their needs. What would they like to see automated around genomics? And oftentimes, our product development is built around what customers are asking for. So as we talked about, we are building, uh, working on larger DNA, degenerate libraries. We're also working on multi-fragment assemblies on the BioXP. In addition to transformation, possibly in vitro transcription and vitro translation. So what application would you like to see developed on the BioXP? And that leads us to our third and final audience poll. OK, thanks, Julie. This is the last one, guys. Um, and we would like to know, as Julie said, what genomics applications would you like to see developed for BioXP? And you can choose multiple applications if you're interested in many different things. Um, that would be great to know. Also, if you have another method that's not listed here, something else that you can dream up that you'd like to do with the BioXP, please uh, let us know in the chat box. Uh, very interested to know what you would like to use this uh, versatile tool for. So uh, it looks like uh, there's some folks that want the automated custom cloning. And large DNA constructs seems to be uh, a pretty popular answer. Some folks doing degenerate DNA libraries, and uh, some more doing multi-fragment assemblies. 
Uh, maybe you want to do your transformation on the, on the instrument as well, um, or in vitro transcription or translation. Uh, it looks like large DNA construct seems to be winning out with, uh, with this audience, and that's definitely a, a good application. Okay, thank you. Back to the webinar. So synthetic biology, where might it take your research? And once again, I really want to thank you for attending. I know you're busy and your time is precious. And I hope you learned something new today. So please don't hesitate. If you want more information, you're welcome to visit our websites. But you can also give us a call. We're happy to hear about your challenges. We want to know how we can help. So again, thank you again for attending. And we hope to hear from you soon. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, we appreciate your time. And we'd now like to take your questions. Um, so audience, if you are in full screen mode, please use the exit key to exit out of full screen. And uh, then you can see the chat window and interact with us. Um, it'll be on the left-hand side of your screen there. So please type your questions in. And it looks like we've got a couple coming through that we can answer here. Um, Gloria asks, could we use Gibson Assembly to build large libraries, uh, 10 to the 5th to 10 to the 7th variants, using an error-prone PCR fragment? Do you have any thoughts on that, Julie? Um, yeah, hey, that's, that's, um, that's a great idea. Currently, what we, if you think about how this instrument um, works, is you provide um, the sequences and where you want those variants. Um, in the product that we're de developing, the NNN and NNK are that way. So um, in, in you're defining where you want those, those variants, and we put degenerate sites there, and then it builds. And so you have a, you're left with a pool of um, all the random mixes of uh, where those degeneracies appeared in your sequence. For yours, if you want error-prone PCR fragments um, or something equivalent to that, uh, you could imagine just having um, a scanning library where you just systematically go through and identify across the region all the degeneracies that you would like to see. And so we would build a kit for that um, and, you know, uh, see where that landed us. And as I said, right now we are working on NNN and NNK. Um, but we do have a field application specialist team who will sit down with you and have a phone call and talk through what your desire is and see if we can come up with a way to build it on the BioXP as a project. And then uh, you would test that. And if it worked for you, then um, you know we would possibly move that into a commercial application. So it would go from a special project to a commercial application. So that's what we're doing right now with um, the, the NNN and NNK libraries. So quite potentially, we could do that. OK, great. Thank you, Julie. Um, next question, Joe is asking, if we wanted our final plasmid to be in a custom vector with a 10 KB insert, how could you accomplish this using the BioXP? That's also a question we hear um, quite often. As I mentioned in the webinar, our next um, size will be 3 KBs. Um, and I also mentioned doing multi-fragment cloning um, on the, yeah, multi-fragment cloning of um, different pieces on the BioXP. So if you can imagine um, the BioXP would build essentially three different 3 KB pieces. Uh, and then move those three into a Gibson assembly reaction mixture uh, to stitch them all together and then cloning it into the vector that you provided on the BioXP. These are the types of things we're working through um, in understanding how we can get to where customers need to be with our current protocols. Um, so that is something that we're very interested in. And we have sites on maybe next year being able to actually out the door build a, you know, 10 KB fragment. Um, and then potentially moving that into automated cloning. It might be that we just build the fragment and then you would move it on the bench with Gibson assembly into your vector. Um, but yeah, we're working on a lot of these different applications that um, customers are asking about. 
Yeah, it's a it's a very um, exciting area, and um, it sounds like the the possibilities really are endless. And we're working on getting the technology to uh, to catch up to all these different customer applications. Um, I guess I I had another question, Julie, if you don't mind. Do mm -hmm. yeah. When I was wondering when you were going through your um, your presentation where you're talking about NGS library preps, um, does the NGS kit also prepare RNA? Um, currently, it does not, but that is an application we're looking at that requires um, slightly different uh, chemistries. Um, so we are looking at developing an RNA application um, for that. But right now, it's the genomic DNA and plasma DNA. So, um, but as I said, we're continuing to look at new applications and new app notes um, to help customers utilize this technology um, to its fullest extent. So. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then I, I actually had another one too. Um, I was just wondering, say I bio, bio XP, I have it in my lab, um, but my instrument ends up during a run, it has a problem. What happens to my samples? Um, do I lose those? So that's a great question. Um, so this instrument is tied to the internet and we can actually do some remote troubleshooting. We can see where the run is in the overnight process or where it you know, stopped um, and decide whether or not it can be rescued. If not, whenever we build your custom kit, we actually stamp multiple plates. So we have backup kits at SGI DNA. And so it would be as simple as saying, hey, you know, I have an issue. I got an instrument error or whatever. Uh, can, I, can I salvage it? If not, we can go ahead and just ship you a replacement kit and you can run that. Um, so oh, we great. do have, yeah, replicate kits that if anything were to go wrong, um, we can ship you a new kit or if you need it, you know, in a real hurry, we can actually run the reaction here at SGI DNA and send you the product off of, that comes off the instrument. So you can just, oh, that's you know, yeah, get what you need as, as quickly as possible. Okay, so there are lots of potential backup options. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't right. Your work. That's great to know. Yep. Um, okay, well, it looks like we are just about out of time. So um, I'd like to thank our speaker, Julie Robinson, and thank all of the members of our audience for joining us today. If you do have additional questions, either that we didn't get to today or additional questions uh, as you're thinking about the presentation, please do contact SGI DNA's technical support team. They are wonderful. Um, also, we will post both the webinar recording and a copy of the webinar slides on our website in a few days. So keep an eye out for the email notification that the recording and the slides are available. So thank you to everyone again for joining us. And thank you to Julie. And we'll go ahead and close the webinar now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.